Hello, Providence hockey fans, and welcome back to This Week in Friars Hockey. I'm Nick Rojas. The Friars had a few weeks off from game action, but resumed play in the 2019 Catamount Cup. In Game 1, they played Lake Superior State, defeating the Lakers in overtime before skating to a tie against Union the following evening. Just this past weekend, the Friars were out in fabulous Las Vegas, where they played in the 2020 Fortress Invitational. It was a great field of teams at T-Mobile Arena, but it was the Friars who came out on top, winning the first game 3-1 over Army before tying against Cornell in a game that was eventually sealed by the Friars in a shootout to secure the Fortress title. This week, they play AIC on the road Thursday night before coming home to Shire Arena to play UConn Saturday evening. On today's episode, we grab a few clips from the Coach Lehman Radio Show, which aired earlier this week. This Week in Friars Hockey starts right now. to the Nate Lehman Hockey Show. Tonight we come to you live from the Providence Burger Bar, 161 Douglas Avenue. Mike Logan along with Friar head coach Nate Lehman. How'd you enjoy the uh, Las Vegas experience? Enjoyed it a lot. Would like to go back. <laughs> you know, hopefully we uh, we get invited back in the future, but a great experience. Great way to break up the season for the guys. Uh, kind of get them out of Dodge, get out of the cold weather, get into some nice warm weather and, and play some really big time hockey. I mean, four teams in the top 20 of the country and uh, I thought we'd play some good hockey out there and we're able to come out on top. Those are a couple of teams too, I would think, Nate, that's going to help as you get back into league play. Army, I don't care what the talent is, you're never going to find a team that works harder than them. And Cornell, big, physical, uh, you know, a tough team to play. Yeah, I mean, Army's always been a hard-working team, but, but but they're talented this year. I mean, they have a big 6'5 center, uh, Dominic Franco, who's a Rhode Island kid that, uh, you know, is, you know is, is a very good player. And they have a good, solid decor. They're, they have a lot of seniors this year. It's, it's kind of their year. And uh, so we had our hands full with that team. Um, and you know, I, I thought we I thought we handled the game. We were fortunate to get out early uh, to a lead because as the game wore on, I think um, you know we were we were starting to fade a little bit. We were getting uh, you know that the travel I think was catching up to us. So got off to a good lead. We were able to manage the game well and and win a, a win a big game to get on to the championship game. I thought it was impressive though. I mean, a lot of talk about Cornell coming in. They've been very consistent. And for you guys to, you know, play the type of game you did, I know frustrating to give up a lead late, but still, uh, and I thought you made a, a comment after the game when you addressed the team. You said, you know, you'd love to grow leads, but it's tough. You're playing good goaltenders. It's not, you know, you have some good chances. You're playing good goaltenders. It isn't always going to go in. Yeah, and it was in, in lack, you know, lack played terrific for us too, you know. So, uh, but that's, the, you know, that's an NCAA hockey game. It's probably like a Frozen Four hockey game, to be honest, or at least a Final Eight game, you know. That's a, in the in the fact that you have two teams that are pretty good, pretty even, um, making plays, and you know which pucks are going to go in. And uh, and and I thought, you know, two one. I was really happy because we were getting stronger throughout the game. We were playing better and better, and we really were starting to make some plays and break them down in the third period. And you know, we had some chances. You know, we had some really good chances. We hit a post. Um, we had a couple guys in. We had some good power play looks. Um, but you know, I mean, I, you know, Tice really had a great blast. That you know, he just ate up, which was, which was, it was a good save. And you, you tip your hat. Um, you know, you're gonna have to beat good goaltenders on good teams. But fortunately, we have one too with Lack. And Lack played terrific in the game. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, wins the shootout, which isn't easy for a goalie. And um, so, um, it's it's something that uh, you know we can kind of take forward with us. Mike Logan joined now by uh, goaltender Michael Lackey. First of all, thanks for joining us. And secondly, congratulations, uh, Co-Defensive Player of the Week of Hockey East. Yeah, thank you, and thanks for having me. How was the experience being out in Vegas? It was fun. You know, uh, I've never been, so it was a brand new experience for me. Uh, but, you know, in an environment like that, you have to treat it like another tournament. You know, it's a lot. It's pretty easy to get caught up in everything going around, but you got to remember why you're there, stay focused on uh, winning the tournament. What was your experience like with the shootout? Obviously you stopped all three shots you, you saw, but as a goaltender, how'd you like it? Um, you know, it's definitely a little stressful, but you know, I just tried to relax and ultimately it was a, it was a fun ending. 
you were saying to me off the year, obviously, and we'll talk about your time at Harvard, but Harvard Cornell, that's the big rivalry. And you were saying you know, a little extra beating, you know, being able to beat Cornell. Yeah, there was a little, little history in that celebration at the end. Uh, you know, obviously played them for four years. They're fans. You know, they travel to every game, whether it's home or away. You know, I think they filled out like two sections in Vegas. So it was, it was fun getting the win over them. You've had a good start to your career here at Providence. Uh, I would argue since uh, probably the second Lowell game in December, you've been the team's best player. Um, I think it's six goals in five games. Has anything changed for you? Or is it just one of those things that, you know, sometimes, you know, you do the same thing game in and game out, and sometimes it just works a little better than others? Yeah, I think I just focused on relaxing a little bit. You know, I think our team defense in general is getting better. It's right. progressing throughout the season, which is definitely a good sign. It's uh, the perfect timing for that. Halfway through the year, you've got one more non-league game Thursday night at AIC than the final 12 uh, in the league. How do you like where you guys are at as far as how you're playing and where things stand? Yeah, I think we're first in Hockey East right now, but uh, you know, I think we still haven't reached our full potential yet. I think we're coming together now, like I talked about, coming together defensively, offensively. You know, We have studs up, up front, so I think we're in a good spot. We just have to stay focused and keep grinding. You've got a game here Thursday night out in Springfield, Nate, and uh, as a coach, this one would concern me just from the standpoint of uh, you've had back-to-back -back tournaments, you're coming off a good feeling in Vegas, uh, you know, you're coming up against an AIC team that is a tournament team from a year ago, and they've got about 80% of that team back. I mean, that's, even though their record is around 500, that's a tough team. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a bit of will be a big challenge on their ice. Um, it's, it's great for us, though. I mean, if, if we want to be the team uh, that makes the NCAA tournament, this is this is a big game for us because they're top three in their league. Um, it's on their ice. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good way to end our, our non-conference portion of our record. Um, so, and, and we're one and one against Atlanta Hockey. So uh, we did pretty well against the ECAC. We did pretty well against the WCHA. Uh, we didn't get a crack at the Big Ten, but um, but Atlanta hockey, this this will be a big game. You know, that, that was the hard part about the first half is, is you know, we had BC, we had BU, we had Northeastern twice, we had Lowell three times. So, you know, like our young guys, um, you know, didn't have a great chance to – it's not like you could just go out and say, all right, we're going to play, uh, you know, some of these freshmen, you know, right. 20 minutes no matter what. You just couldn't do that. The games were too important. So – um, we've got through that. They're growing, and and now we've we've put ourselves in position to um, to to be in it. So you know, let's let's hope we can continue to to play well. Best of luck Thursday night. Thanks, Mike. Hi. For a preview of the matchups this weekend, we welcome back Mike Demars. Mike, what do you got? Thanks, Nick. The Friars will have two games this week, starting Thursday night as they travel to Springfield, Massachusetts, to take on AIC, before returning home on Saturday to skate against UConn. The AIC Yellow Jackets are 9-10-1 on the season, including a 6-3-1 record at home. They are coming off a split with Air Force last weekend. Leading the attack for AIC is Blake Christensen with 5 goals and 12 assists, giving him a team-high 17 points. Christensen's 47 total points and 31 assists set team records for AIC last season. The UConn Huskies come to Friartown riding a 3-game losing streak after dropping decisions to Dartmouth, Northeastern, and Merrimack. The Huskies have an overall record of 7-9-4, and, and they have a 4-6-2 record in Hockey East. UConn has three players tied for the team lead with 13 points. Vladislav Firstoff and Jakob Kondalik have a team-leading six goals, and Benjamin Freeman leads the squad with 10 assists. The Friars are 12-3 all-time against AIC, and the last time the Yellow Jackets beat the Friars was back in 1960. As for the Huskies, this will be the third and final meeting between the Friars and UConn this season. The Friars will look to clinch the season series as they already have a win and a tie under their belt. That's your weekend preview. Sending it back to you, Nick. Thanks, Mike. That'll just about wrap up today's episode. Thursday night in Springfield, Massachusetts, the Friars will play AIC. The puck drops on that one at 7.05 p.m. Saturday night at 5 p.m., the Friars are playing UConn. It's family fun night here at the rink. We also want to let you know about a deal going on right now for these Friar packs. Four tickets get you four scarves for only six bucks. Look at this scarf right here. Show your Friar pride with a scarf all winter long. What's better than that? While you're there, you can head to Friars.com or call 401-865-GO-PC for more information about how you can get this great scarf. 
While you're there, you can also check out our social media pages where you can catch all the videos from this past weekend in Vegas. Thank you so much for watching This Week in Friars Hockey. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.